Welcome to Talk Tennis. Today's guests are co-hosts of one of the most popular tennis podcasts where they share stories around the world of adult rec tennis from the Second Serve podcast. Welcome, Erin and Carolyn. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Okay, so very, very first, I want you guys to introduce yourselves. Tell me how you met, and then I have a fun little icebreaker question for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, (laughs) You start. I'm Carolyn, and I practiced corporate law for 10 years. Oh, my gosh. And that was boring. Instead, (laughs) I love talking about adult recreational tennis. Um, And we met on the tennis court. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love that. That's so amazing. So I have a, this is Erin. I have a background in graphic design and marketing and I had no idea that I was going to do a podcast in my life. Carolyn always kind of joked about when we would be out on the court, she'd say, that'd be a great podcast episode. And I'd say like, that's so funny. Not thinking that she was actually serious about starting a podcast one day. So during the pandemic, she called me, we weren't playing for a couple months. We both were injured. It just happened to be during lockdown that it was a good time for us to take off. And she called me and she said, would you record an episode with me? And I said, oh, I thought you were kidding about that. (laughs) She's like, no, let's do it. So we did. And then my background and her just like genius with all like teaching herself how to podcast and like learning how to edit and all that stuff. And And then Erin's amazing. She's a graphic designer. Yeah. Yeah. So those two just kind of came together. We had no idea we would be great partners. We're good partners on the court. (laughs) We're really good podcast partners as well because we just have different strengths. So it really works. Wow. I love yeah. that. It's cool to hear all these things that have come out of COVID in a yeah. positive light. So yes, that's awesome. Great. Um, Similar, but mine was pre-COVID, but it was kind of like, why don't we do a podcast? Yeah. We're talking about this stuff anyway. So that's really cool. So my fun icebreaker question is, since your podcast is called the Second Serve Pod, what is your Second Serve style? Are you like a oh, safety, a like just get it in? Do you go for it? Are you hitting a kick? What kind of Second Serve style do you have? That's a good Mine question. is safety, just get it in. <laughs> and I, I want to work on that. I want to work on that. So her first serve is amazing when it goes in. <laughs> it doesn't go in very and her often. second serve oh is gosh. safe. Oh, I love None it. of my game is safe. I am a go big or go bigger. Yes. Same. Always. Yes. Same girl. <laughs> yeah. I've heard, I've listened to a lot of your podcasts. So I kind of know that about you. Um, yeah, I am. Um, I don't have in my brain like maybe take this next shot safely. I, and so my second serve, I actually do it almost the same as my first serve. I just, you know, maybe take it off a little bit. I don't double fault a ton. Um, I do do a lot of second serves though. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I don't play it safe ever. Nice. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta ever. Go big I need go to, home. but never. Yeah. <laughs> what do I, I always say like life's too short to play like safe. Play tennis. like you want to play. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So why did you both turn to tennis? Why tennis? How did Mm -hmm. it even become something that you were even interested in? Tell me about your process to getting on the court. Okay, so I mainly played basketball growing up. Mm -hmm. I played AAU basketball. And then even as an adult, I was playing adult recreational basketball and yeah, I read that in your bio, and that's, yeah. like, intense. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a contact sport. And yeah. what happened was this is after having kids. Somebody, got, you know, got a rebound, came down, hit me in the head, not oh on gosh. purpose. But I realized I don't need to do a contact sport at my yeah. age. I need to find <laughs> another sport. And my husband, who also plays adult recreational tennis, was like, you should play tennis. It's so much fun. So I went out there. I took a lesson from a pro. Mm -hmm. And then the pro contacted a group of ladies and told me I should go out there and play with them. Um, And I did. And then after I played with them for fun, I got a text saying, there wasn't enough room for me on, on a the team. team. On oh, the team. So I got, got I got cut. She got cut. Before and you I, didn't, I didn't yeah. even know I was trying out. Oh, I got no. cut from a 2-5 adult <laughs> recreational team. Um, so that's how it started. But then I played some more. And I absolutely love it. And to the captain's credit, I mean, I was hitting everything over the fence. <laughs> yeah. I should have been cut. I just didn't know I was trying out. So that's how I started. You're like, I'll show them. <laughs> yeah, big mistake. Right? Yeah, big mistake. <laughs> I love it. Um, so Carolyn's basketball background, which I did not know, obviously, until I start, until I met her playing tennis, makes her an amazing tennis player. She is like all over the net with amazing footwork. And I'm in the back just wailing it so that she yes, can. Yes. Put she it has away. amazing ground yeah. strokes. Yes. <laughs> so um, my background is um, I had never touched a racket in my entire life, not growing up, nothing. Um, but I was always in sports. I was like, you know, a swimmer. I was a powder puff football 
quarterback. I threw, you know, softballs with my dad all the time. So as an adult, I wanted to find a sport. I don't, I didn't have time for golf. I still don't have time for golf. Um, (laughs) So, and I, and I wanted, you know, I wanted to burn calories and, you know, make it worth being out somewhere for a couple hours. So my husband and I tried kickball. (laughs) Terrible. (laughs) Because we were already like in our thirties, we were already like the oldest people out there. It was basically Uh just a reason to drink beer. Right. Which is great. You know, nothing against that. But um, so then I was like, I love volleyball. And I was going to do that at like the YMCA, but I was already in my thirties. I'm like, I can't afford to like fall on the ground or get hurt or, you know, so then I just found tennis. Um, my husband actually, it was his doing. He got me, um, five lessons from a pro as a Christmas present. And like I said, never had touched a racket, loved it immediately, of course. And then I just kept buying more and more lessons for myself. Um, and then same with Carolyn, like joined a team, um, started playing USTA League. She didn't get cut. I didn't get cut, but <laughs> I probably should have. I think it was just the right time for me. It was a really bad team that just needed extra players. So so I called my mom pretty soon after I started. And I was like, why didn't you ever introduce me to tennis? And she kind of like yelled back at me and was like, what do you want from me? You played every other sport out there. Like you needed to do tennis too. So I'm kind of glad I didn't because um, I love it as an adult. Um, but I wish I had done it because I don't have strokes. Like I have, you know, like I have adult Mm -hmm. strokes that are just (laughs) not that pretty. They're kind of effective, but they're just straight, very unconventional. Yeah. We don't look like Michelle. Yeah. We don't. We we see the videos of you. In my mind, I look like Michelle. In in my mind, I look like every pro, but I've seen myself on video. Right. Terrifying. <laughs> it, what I mean, Brad Gilbert says it best winning ugly, it doesn't have to exactly. be pretty. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, that actually, there was a question I wanted to ask you that you guys, we had shared some outlines and you guys had asked me, and I've been like racking my brain on how to answer it for like a week. But I think you guys will have a better answer because I've been playing tennis for like 35 years. Yeah. <laughs> but what is like your favorite moment been on the tennis court? Ooh, go first, Erin. You too. Oh, gosh. That's literally okay. like the hardest question. That is really hard. And we're going to ask you the same <laughs> yes. question. So be prepared. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just before COVID, we had just before, actually, Carolyn and I just got bumped up that year before anybody knew that we were going to have COVID, right? So we got bumped up that November. But before that, we had taken our 18 over and I had taken my 40 over. She was not 40 yet to <laughs> states, um, to, to the state tournament. And we ended, so we had two teams are almost identical. So we were sending people to different courts. And I mean, it was a puzzle to kind of put it, you know, get everybody, you know, at the right matches at the right places. And I was a captain of one of those teams and we ended up winning for our 40 over team and our semifinal match. I feel like that might've gone to a pro set. It was, it was a short, it was some sort of short set, but we knew when we won that match, like they were our hardest competition. Mm-hmm. So the next going into the next day, we won fairly easily. And I was so excited because I had been to state so many times that had never won, mm-hmm. but we also couldn't go on to sectionals because it was really like two weeks away. We had to travel to Alabama. And so I remember when we won, we told the other team within a few minutes, like, we're not going to go to sectionals. And they were so excited because they got the bid instead of us. They were hugging us. And oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was so fun. You know, like, it was great to, like, all of the teams were just, like, hugging. And it was just really yeah. fun. Aww. Yeah. But, and with all that said, my favorite thing always is to be on a court with Carolyn. And I know that sounds super cheesy, so nice. but we're such a good team on the court. Like, she, I was playing singles yesterday, and she was playing doubles with someone else. And I looked over, and I was like, oh, I wish I was playing with doubles with Carolyn right now. <laughs> oh my it's gosh. Because so nice. so we, we just play yeah. really well together. Like yeah. we're just really a good team. Yeah, You're like sure. double soulmates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And Erin's always like, it's beautiful outside. Oh, I'm like sunshine like she, rainbows. She is, which is such a, you know, it's so fun to be on the court with her. Whereas I'm normally like, I want to win. And yes. so Erin oh kind of talks me down a little yeah. bit. So she's great. My most memorable moment, this is kind of a weird one now thinking about it, but (laughs) I had just had my second child and, you know, like I was in the house constantly and I was tired and you just don't feel like yourself. And um, a tennis friend called me and asked me to get outside and play tennis. Yeah. And I remember, you know, just being like, I'm tired. I don't know if I should, but I was able to coordinate everything and get out on the court and I just felt so much better. Yeah. Like, and I just wanted, I remember thinking, I wish everybody 
had that opportunity. Like when you're feeling low to get out on the mm -hmm. court and play. And mm -hmm. um, so still to this day, I mean, and I think she beat me 6-0, So she didn't take it easy <laughs> on me. But just to feel like it makes you feel so much better. Yeah. So I want that for everyone. No, I literally say that like no matter what's going on in the world, like you can mm -hmm. be having the worst day, the worst news, the worst whatever. Like the second you step on the court, like nothing else matters and like everything makes sense. Yes. And at least to me. Right, <laughs> so right. Yeah. I love that answer. That's great. Yeah. You guys kind of like I love this. Like you're already answering questions that I had for you. I was gonna. <laughs> that's ask we have a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's that's probably why. Right. Um, I was gonna ask later down the road, but you already started alluding to it. What kind of teammate are you? Because you know, there's always like those hyper uppers or like the Debbie Downers. Yes. <laughs> and, yes, yes. So, what kind of teammate are you guys? An, Aaron's an amazing teammate. I mean, you can mess up. Every time you mess up, she says, good try. Nice. Yeah. You know? It's true. We're not, um, yeah, we're wreck players. Nobody's ever going to be that great. And we could have like a genius moment in one point and literally the next hit, you know, hit the easiest ball out. So yes. I never take any of it too seriously. Yes. For as much as, I mean, I'm competitive, but I mm -hmm. also am realistic to know that. But yeah, yeah. And we even did a, an episode on what you shouldn't say to your doubles partner. Like, because as a rec player, you're told everything. Yes. I mean, yeah. you're told, watch the line. That's not your ball. Right. I mean, there's so much that you're told. So I try to just be really positive out there because, again, I mean, and I think Aaron's taught me this, you know, you're going to mess up. That's the reason we are the level we are. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to mess up the most, the easiest shot ever. And then, you know, the best shots I make are when they go off, like, the end of my racket and have spin. <laughs> right. So... And you're like, yes, I've been practicing that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh. And like I said, I'm a big, you know, go big or go home. I hit the ball really hard. Um, I don't get too mad at myself for not adjusting. I feel like I have so many, so like so many years to play. Um, so I don't get really that up or down day to day. Um, I think Carolyn and I are very different in the sense of because she grew up playing a sport that had a referee. She's mm. always like, <laughs> like she's our rules girl. And I'm always like, Oh, everything's fine. You know? And she's like, but the rule says, and the referee says, and you know, this is a sport that you don't have someone out yeah, there. It's unofficiated. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know how kids do it. I don't know how you did it, Michelle, without an official out there. Yeah. So Carolyn there's always that, that roving of official, at least yeah. in junior tournaments. You're like, excuse me over there. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. We <laughs> yeah. wish we had that, but, um, so it just makes me laugh. I love like the psychology of the game and I love like, knowing I can look at Carolyn and I'm like, she's frustrated. She wishes there was an official here. She just went to a tournament recently and she's like, it's hard. I mean, we've been to several, but she's like, it's really still hard to get used to the fact that the crowd is quiet. You know, in basketball, they're like, miss it. And everybody's screaming behind the, you know, when she's trying to throw a three throw or whatever. And yeah, so she's like, this is, it's just so different. And I'm, you know, it, it just makes me laugh because I'm just out there to have a good time, hit the ball hard, you know, win as many matches as I can, make friends be social, yes. you know. It's such a good way to make friends too. Yeah. Carolyn, you mentioned that you do have children. Do you guys both have children and do your kids mm -hmm. play tennis now because you're playing tennis? So I have two children and they are nine and six. And I'm trying yes. to decide whether or not I want them to play for fun. They yeah. are into soccer and other sports right now. But not having an official out there bothers me a little bit <laughs> as a parent. And maybe Michelle can talk a little bit to this because you are a, you know, an all-star and grew up playing in tournaments. But I've heard these horror stories about playing tennis as a child. And so um, I'm a little hesitant to sign my kids up for um, competitive tennis, yeah. I think. Which is funny because her and her husband are both very good players. So to not have their kids playing, I think is... But it makes sense. Yeah, but I want them to play for fun and to learn. But yeah. 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 So I'd like to hear well, what Michelle has to say. Well, today. no, this is great. I I don't know. I guess it's this thing when we get older, we're so like reflective on our past. Yes. And I was like talking to someone bef right before this and I was like trying to like kind of see my tennis life. And I have these like different mm -hmm. chapters of when I was in juniors, when I was in college, after college as a coach, now at T-Dub. And I am working with an 11-year-old girl right now. And she is or was a very high performing gymnastics girl, mm -hmm. like very high performing. And one day she just decided to quit. She yep. was getting injured. And I mm -hmm. think there was too much pressure. Yes. So when I first met her, 
She was kind of shy, like, you know, super natural talent. Like this girl started tennis in COVID. She, it's insane. She's tight. I'm impressed. Every week her ground yeah. strokes get bigger, better, harder. Anyways. So the first few times I'm like, okay, I'm going to be very cognizant of like keeping score because it's clear like she kind of has this like potential trauma basically around right, being yeah. judged and being told that she's not good enough, especially in gymnastics. And it's just been really fun to like kind of get to know her personality and be able to push her where she wants to be pushed. Mm -hmm. And so I do like when I'm working with her, I do a lot of like, let's go 25 balls in to this target. And like, if we miss, we go back to zero. And you yeah. can see there's certain days where like she'll start missing and she gets super frustrated and it's mm -hmm. been more than 10 minutes. I'm like, oh, let's go grab water and like right, right. reset kind of things. But then there's other days when like there's not a specific like number or whatnot. And she's like, okay, give me, give me, what's our goal? <laughs> and I'll be like, yeah. oh. Yeah. And then it will be like, do you want to keep score? Yes. Yes. I want to keep score. <laughs> so even like, and she's starting slowly to play matches, but one of her other coaches was like, talk to Michelle about the importance of playing UTR matches and playing more tournaments. And like now at this point in my life, I'm like, if you're having fun, that's great. If you go play a tournament and you're not having fun, don't play a tournament. Like, we don't need to, like, even at that level, even if she's going to be the next American player, you know, like, best American player, I'm just like, it has to be fun, period. Yeah. And yeah. that's where I'm at. So yeah. I say sign them up for fun tennis this summer, get yeah. them playing, and they'll let you know what exactly. level they want to go. <laughs> and, I, and I have a son that did play. He's um, he's older now. I mean, he's 19, but um, he played, um, you know, JTT, just, like, at mm -hmm. the local, you know, Parks and Rec club type yeah. thing and he played for years and he he enjoyed it he was a you know good player he never wanted to go past like I think he played 18U was at, at like 16 or 17 no maybe at 16 he played 18U but I mean those were kids that were going on to college so he just played with his friends and then ended up quitting but we just hit um he hasn't hit in probably a year or two and we just went on a little vacation and played with our friends who we went on vacation with and it came back to him so quickly and, and he came home. I think Carolyn was like, you should start playing again. And he's like, <laughs> maybe I will, you know, but he knows like he has the fundamentals, mm -hmm. but he never took it too seriously. He just played for fun. And now like getting to be an adult. I mean, he is an adult. I hate to say that, but yeah, I think he will pick it back up <laughs> later on in life. So, yeah, and it's fun. Nice. Like I'll be able to hit with him if he picks it back up. Yeah. I am hoping exactly. our entire family can hit together. <laughs> like that's the goal. That's, is I love that. that. Yeah. We enjoy it and go out there and play. And then maybe they'll be really good adult recreational players. Right. <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, and like you guys already mentioned, it's like kind of a skill set. So like if you move to a new place, like sign up yes. for a tennis league and like yes. you just have new friends, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> Usually. <true>. Yeah. <laughs> or you an activity. Yeah. And you become friends with people that you don't think you have anything in common with. And then you realize that you do. You know, yeah. so that's a great thing. Nice. Okay. Let's do a little bit of a shift because I know that our listeners love to talk about gear. Yes. And I can already hear the comments that I'm giggling too much. But like <laughs> I said before we started recording, sometimes the girls just need to gab. And you know what? That's, <laughs> Dan's that's like, part move of it along, move it along. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what is your current gear of choice? And can you guys talk to me a little bit about the process of starting tennis and how you maybe have changed your gear? to now. Okay. So I've been through a lot of rackets and yes. I've had wrist issues. We can relate. Okay. We, a so, lot of people can relate. Oh, yeah. can they? Okay. So oh, that's yeah. the reason. So as a 2530, I used a Babolat Pure Drive light. Mm -hmm. So it was lighter. And I would play like these three hour singles yeah. matches yeah. where I'm doing is like trying to get it back, trying to get it back. Yeah. Then I did Babolat Pure Drive. Then I did Babolat Pure Drive team. And oh. now I have, I was still having wrist issues. But now I have the head extreme PWR and my oh. the head size is 115 mm -hmm. and I have Huge. it. I, yeah, mm -hmm. she, <laughs> she's going to show it. I was going to show how big Wait, this thing I, is. I've got a racket that I have to. I, I might I have an upgrade for you. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, oh good. Because <laughs> she's been made fun of. Oh, yes, yes. We actually, which one's yes. bigger? Which yeah, one's exactly. bigger? That's the one I, I need. It. Big and sweet you, spot here. Yes, right. but I need it. And even my 
pro and a friend that loves rackets kind of made fun of me. Not kind of, like full blown made fun <laughs> of me. They did. Her. They did. Full but, blown. but then I, after my pro saw me yeah. hit with it and my wrist didn't hurt, that's all that mm -hmm. matters as an adult rec player yeah. is that I'm not in pain. And my pro afterwards was like, I think that's the right racket yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny when you said wrist pain. I almost was going to say, let me guess, you started with a babla. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Um, and then it was interesting because you went from a light racket to a heavier racket and then you went down to a lighter racket again. Right. And then, of course, me being the geek of gear, um, I have to ask, do you know what strings were in it? Uh, so I started changing strings up too. So that was uh, during this whole process of my mm -hmm. wrist hurting. Yeah. I think I started with a polyester and my husband oh, no. actually... Yes. And that was bad. That was yeah. bad. And right now I have, I think, our Technofiber NRG2. Yes. My yes. husband said it's a multifilament and yes. I love it. Yes. I love it. We and let, now I have no wrist issues. Yes. It's that crazy. makes sense. Yeah. Nice. Good. We let her husband do the research for us. <laughs> he's actually strung some of my rackets too, but I can't awesome. tell you what he's strung. Do you know what he's strung? I know he's strung. So I hit with all power. Okay. All power, almost no yes. touch. Um, I'm embarrassed to say... I have only ever played with two rackets. That's okay. Um, and I can't tell you what the Babylot was. And I liked it. It was great. What color was it? Oh, gosh. You know what it was? You're going to really laugh at me. Do you no. remember when they put the little chip in the... Yes. So the that play. you could see like where the yes. sweet spot was and what your serve speed was and all that. My yes. husband bought me that as a gift. So that was the Pure Drive. And I loved it. I thought yes. it was great. But I started with... Um, I started with and am now still currently using... I think it was the Serena racket, which is oh, the Blade, Blade 104, something yes. like that. The, so Wilson, I love that racket so much. Like, love it, love it. So I have several of those. Nice. Um, and then, like I said, Carolyn's husband has strung it several different ways. I used to be the one that would write down in my calendar when I was to restring. Yes. Like, I've played four or five <laughs> times this week. I need to, I would put it on my calendar. Like, that's how geeky I was about it. Um, so I would change strings a lot. And Back then, I would just give it to our pro and say, string, you know, string it with what you think. Because when you hit with a pro, they know how you hit. So I kind of left it up to them. And now the nice thing is my um, Carolyn's husband has a stringer. So he's done it a few times for me. And one time he did a multi-fill and a poly. Yeah, 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 hybrid. Yeah, hybrid. Which yeah. was great. And I do not break strings because I really, I, I, have, I have some top spin, but mostly I hit hard and flat. Mm -hmm. And I actually broke strings on those. I think it was the oh. moving together. Yeah. And I was like, whoa. I broke a string. I was so excited. <laughs> Isn't but that I, funny? <laughs> but that's my main. And actually, I, 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 this is absolutely true. I am going to rely on you because I am ready for some new rackets. So. Oh, yes. Yeah. I need we want to hear what Michelle yes, has to say. We need some big time we're gonna, Yeah. We're going to have a chat about that on your Good, podcast, okay, too. Perfect. So I'm excited yeah. for that. I have to ask, do you know if it's the Blade 104 or the Blade SW 104? Blade 104. Okay, good. Because the Blade, the actual Serena spec is like a massive beefy racket. Oh, yeah. That it's like heavy. Me. It's great. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's a hard one to yeah. tame yeah. To, for sure. It's a hard one to tame. <laughs> Just like my tennis game. <laughs> Same. So I don't need the bracket to be tamed and my tennis game. So I'll stick to the Blade. Yes. Um, and that's a great option. Um, what about shoes and apparel? What are you guys wearing on the feet? And what's your like design aesthetic? Like, what kind of clothes are you wearing on the court? I'll start because yeah. you have a long list and I do. Yes, I see I'm a, a trend. <laughs> yeah, do you see a trend? I'm tried yes. and true. I think that was one of your questions. I'm a tried and true. I wear ASICs, um, either the gel resolution nice. or the, not the speed. I don't know what the difference is, but I've tried them both. And yeah. then um, I have the clay version and the hard version because we play on both surfaces. Um, yeah, we have, we actually locally have red clay on some what? courts and then we play on a lot of green clay and I'm not sure what that clay is called, but, <laughs> <Hard> um, <trip. laughs> and then, um, I have played in an Adidas shoe and I mm -hmm. liked it, but mm -hmm. I've just, my tried and true is always. So when you guys, when I see new styles on your website, I literally am like buy several at a time because they Seriously. go so fast. Yes. Yeah. So I'll Especially buy like right my, now. <laughs> yeah, I'll buy my size in like three different colors and then I just rotate them. Like nice. I just, you know, rotate them around. Like so. a pro. <laughs> oh, is that what they do? Yeah, that's totally Pros, what they just do. Like <laughs> us. You're yeah. just, like, you're like, just like a pro, Erin. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Carolyn has a long list. Oh, okay. Well, with my clothes, I have oh, yeah, to do clothes. what's yeah. comfortable for me. Yes. So, yes. so I have like an Adidas visor, then a Lucky in Love shirt or an Under Armour shirt, and then a Nike shorts. We do Nike shorts. Yeah, and then ASIC shoes. But I have been through 
so many different pairs of shoes because we were talking about this before the podcast started. Mm -hmm. I've done Nike, I've done Adidas, <laughs> I've done Babolat, and now I'm in Asics, the same shoe as Aaron. But I had a okay. lot of, I had plantar fasciitis. Mm -hmm. So anytime something hurts, she's changing. Mm -hmm. I'm changing. <laughs> so yeah, I got you. You guys are going to have to like, we're going to have to be best friends now because <laughs> I love, I like geek out on shoes yeah. and can literally be your shoe savant. Yay. Um, yeah. Carolyn's <laughs> like, really you see? She's clapping. <laughs> I need like we can do cons consults. Like okay, okay perfect. We need a consult. New we'll shoes. Call right after this is all over. <laughs> yeah, please do. Being a female in sometimes what feels like a more male dominated world, it's yeah. fun to kind of like talk about footwear with the boys and like surprise yeah. them. Like oh, she knows what she she's mm. talking about. <laughs> but yeah, so I and you're not alone with like the switching of the brands and like plantar mm -hmm. fasciitis and what's available, but I like that. And I like yeah. that you're also not brand loyal because some people are very brand loyal. Yeah. yeah. And we were talking about that's what makes Tennis Warehouse so nice yeah, is that we can go and be like, okay, I want this. Now I want this. And you don't have yeah. to go to different websites. Yeah. You, know? yeah. Not at all. you just like own your, yeah, your style, great. right? Yeah. Erin, what about you? What are you wearing on um, Apparel Wise? I, yeah. I do the same thing. I don't I like... I guess when Carol and I were kind of talking about it, I do tend to wear a lot of Nike stuff. I think it's just the fit for me. Um, so I would love the Nike shorts. Um, not so much the Nike skirts. They don't fit as well. Um, but I have several pairs of the, like every year they come out with a new short with that I can stick the ball in. I always mm -hmm. get mm -hmm. Nike visors. Like I probably... I don't know. There's something about a visor for me that just makes my head look weird or great. So I go <laughs> through like trying to find the perfect Nike. It's always Nike. Uh -huh. um, and then, um, yeah, I just kind of all your brands too, but I don't, I don't stick true to anything other than probably those two things. And then the shoes always Asics. Yeah. Nice. Okay. I like that. I like that. I have a, a bunch of fun questions, but do you guys, is it ever intimidating for you to, try something new or if you feel stuck with your equipment does it feel a bit intimidating I yes, feel like I'm like leading sure. the witness <laughs> no yeah. for sure both of us yeah yeah because there's a part of me that I'm like <laughs> is it my skill level right is the reason oh, I'm not no. doing something or is it the equipment y yeah. you know like do I need a change and so it's very hard to mm -hmm. to make the change and there's so many choices and it can yes. be feel a little overwhelming yes it's so overwhelming. There's so many choices and I'm like still trying to figure out a way to make it easy for everyone. Right, but, right. Um, and like I said, I mean, I'm very, tr you know, uh, true to my racket because, and part of it too is just, you know, again, being adult rec players, we're, you know, older in age. I didn't start until I was an adult. So not getting an injury is probably like the number one thing always, 100%, you know, in yeah. the forefront. So like I used to change, I mean, I do change my grip all the time. Um, but I also like realized that I had a couple grips on my racket at one point and mm -hmm. I stopped during the pandemic. I stopped during lockdown. We, we both stopped playing for about three months because I had tennis elbow so bad. Mm -hmm. And then I realized like it was my grip more than anything. Cause I went back to playing almost three months later and had the exact same pain, even with resting. And then I did just kind of tweak my racket a little bit and that completely solved it for me. Um, so in that sense, that's probably why I don't change as much as I would like to change because I love the new shiny toy, you know, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've seen a bunch of the, I think they're even Wilson rackets with like really cool paint on them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I kind of like fawn over everybody else's equipment, but, um, but I do change bags all the time. Yes. Oh, I? goodness. Yes. Okay. Now, we're, like, now we really just became best friends. <laughs> yeah. I'm a little bag obsessed. In fact, Carolyn <laughs> and I have the exact same bag right now. Which bag? Because... It's the head. Um, and I just saw a new one on because I obsessively watch tennis also. Um, <laughs> I don't know what it's called, but it's the head one that's um, like teal and kind of pinkish red. Mm -hmm. And then they just came out with one. I was just watching the um, French Open and they have the same exact head bag now, but it's like all kind of like a rosy pink color. I just okay. saw a pro with it. Erin <laughs> always has a new bag. I used to use all Wilson's and it, but here's what I do. I watch your videos to see like, <laughs> is all my stuff going to fit? So right? I'll watch all the gear videos and be like, and literally watch someone putting like, this can fit six rackets. This can fit 12 rackets, you know? And uh, Carol and I both carry a bunch of stuff. We've actually done an episode on what's in your bag, right? Because it's like kind of obnoxious, but my, our bags are huge. I have a friend that I play with who's like small. And she literally said to me, she goes, I think I could fit in your bag. <laughs> 
And we don't true. carry 12 rackets. Like we both carry two, I we think. We carry two. Yeah. But we have so much other stuff way. in our bags that, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I switch bags a lot. If I've been playing for 10 years, I've probably had 20 bags. I don't know. At least. At least. At least. She at least. Always maybe has more. A new bag. <laughs> yeah, maybe more. Yeah. It's funny too, because I'm not into purses at all. I could care oh, less. Oh, really? Care oh. less about a purse, but my tennis oh. bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My tennis bag Where's is my thing. Inch? It's my jam. <laughs> I love that, though. Um, yes, we could talk about bags. I love bags. Ugh, um, I'm like you. And people are like, what do you have in there? And I'm I like, everything. It's, exactly. What like, don't I don't have. Did you need something? Because yes. I've got it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I hear you. Are there any industry secrets that I can help debunk? Anything that feels very overwhelming? <laughs> okay. Yes. Well, I have, I have a lot of questions for you. But yes. play court shoes versus hard court shoes. Yes. Is there really a difference? Yes. Yes, there is. I know this. There is. The most obvious difference is obviously going to be the outsole. And it's that full herringbone. It's usually one piece. So if you look at some of your other shoes, some of them have a – there's – two pieces, and then they have the shank in the middle, so they'll be separated by two. But the clay has one piece, so it's completely flat to the clay. Mm -hmm. And the herringbone's going to be a tighter diagonal shape. I'm making, for anyone listening, I'm making the (laughs) zigzag. I'm a very, like, hands-talking person. Um, And so that allows the clay to slide in and out of the shoe's outsole faster, which would be better. It's I always say, can you wear a hard court shoe on a clay court? Yes. However, you're going to have a better experience with a clay court outsole for sliding. I can't slide worth anything. So I it's slide. not even. <laughs> I slide because I don't have great footwork. So I'm always sliding to the ball where Carolyn takes like 15 steps to my one <laughs> big slide. But that's where I do notice my shoes. So okay. I, so it's not marketing. This is not, legit. It's not marketing. And there's another legit. thing that a lot of people don't realize, and we don't really talk about it as much, but the upper on the shoe is usually a tighter woven fabric or knit, and it helps keep clay out of the shoe. Yeah. So there is a I difference. noticed, yeah, I, I noticed um, I was going to a match and I thought I was going to play on clay, but got put on a hard, no, opposite, excuse me. So I had my hard court shoes on mm-hmm. and I used to just play in the same, like I would just play hard court shoes for mm-hmm. no matter what the surface was. But now I don't know if it's this red clay or what it is, but I noticed one day I was slipping and okay. not sliding, not sliding yeah. because I was sliding into a great shot. <laughs> Literally like, and I looked down, I was like, oh, I have the wrong shoes on. So I did notice it. Okay. That's the one thing I know. Traction. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's good. It's, it's not, not a know, marketing. Yeah. It's, it's not marketing. And it's tough to get clay shoes sometimes. It is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And in cute colors. Because exactly. that's always a factor. I know. Why are we making clay shoes in white? <laughs> right. Yes, exactly. I know. I was obsessively cleaning my white shoes off for, <laughs> when I started playing on the red clay. And I did that like three times and I'm like, no. I, I can't keep this up. I'm just gonna no, give it up. Yeah. So um, how about another question about do pros actually play with the rackets? that they endorse. I love this question because it causes so much like banter. Yeah. Controversy. Some do and some don't. Yeah. They're um, normally, I would say your top 20 singles players have racket endorsements, um, putting the word endorsement in quotes. So they have worked with the manufacturer to create a racket that they specifically have. It's probably slightly different than the retail version, whether it's a string pattern, weight, thickness of beam. However, because we work with a lot of top players, um, more specifically on the double side, there are many, many pros that are using the exact same rackets that you can buy at TennisWarehouse.com. Wow. And the biggest thing that they will do that's different than a rec player is that they make sure that their rackets are matched. So we talk a lot about quality control and Mm -hmm. you can buy three of the same rackets and they can have different balance points and different swing weights, even though they might weigh the same. And so someone that's playing as often as they are and relying so much on their gear really needs them to all line up and match. So that's what they will do. But yes, like we have a bunch of sponsored pros that we work with and several of them, literally, we just send them rackets nice. and then they get them like matched on their end. Yeah. I'm surprised that my the blade that I have, I have two of them because I'm like, I, I love this racket so much. I need the identical, you know, I need its twin, but I, not realizing that, I mean, obviously I'm not high level enough to even know that it's slightly different. But you probably would still realize it. And you hear a lot of players, even rec level players, say like, oh, I have two rackets and this one's my favorite or this is the one I play matches with. 
And there might be a reason why. It might not right. just be your lucky racket. It Sometimes might it's just like the smiley face dampener that I have on there. That's the <laughs> that one I too. grab. As opposed to, or if I'm feeling, you know, like I'm going to be mad, I get the one with like the mean face. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, I have one more. Actually, yes, my husband I love told these me questions. To, my husband is a huge fan of oh Michelle. So, um, yes. yeah, that he told me to make sure to tell you this that. But so cute. Um, he had a question about pressureless balls. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, wh- what's the deal with them? Do they last <laughs> longer? Or what, what's your opinion on those? Yes. Um, okay. So pressureless balls, in my opinion, are best for someone that's got a ball machine and is like going to put in a lot of hours with them. They're very durable. However, they sometimes bounce a bit harder. They feel, I always am like rock, I call them like yeah. rock balls. We did a whole deep dive last year into tennis balls. And like we came out of it as if you're trying to have the best experience on the court and you're only playing a couple times a week, Go out of your way to like make sure you're playing with the best ball that you can play with. So I reserve pressureless balls literally for like ball machines or like if you don't care and you're going to go and you might lose a couple. Um, I don't even think it's a great teaching ball per se because it does feel a bit firmer. But yeah, that's just my opinion on pressureless balls. And Carolyn knows I'm a ball snob. (laughs) <laughs> yes, we need I am, we need people like that. I am a ball snob. I want to play with a brand new can. It's not that Same. expensive. Open pop a can of balls. It's not. And then it's funny because we actually did an episode where early on in my tennis career, in air quotes, um, <laughs> someone showed up. We we were on a hard court, and I think it, I had to bring the balls for our doubles match or whatever. And I popped a can, and this lady was like, "Do you have?" hardcore balls because those are clay. And I'm like, there's different <laughs> balls for different surfaces. I had no well, idea, right? And now yeah. I am that person. Oh, yes. like, I played singles <laughs> yesterday and the lady, like literally as she was opening the can of balls, I was like, ah, they're hardcore. I, and I, I should have stopped her and said, I have a can. Let, let me open them, you know, but she was the home team and I didn't want it to be awkward and because there's enough awkwardness in rec tennis, but, <laughs> but I totally know the difference. I'm a huge mm-hmm. ball snob. It's like, I don't know if you guys are champagne drinkers, but it's like when you're like having an event, you tell everyone to bring a bottle of champagne and it's like, you kind of judge what kind of bottle everyone brings. (laughs) Like just saying, oh, you brought Vuv? Great. Oh, you brought Cooks? Oh. (laughs) Yeah. We showed up to States one time. It was Carolyn and myself and a friend of ours. And she's also a ball snob and she changes rackets all the time. I mean, she's like addicted to tennis warehouse. She needs an intervention, but we, um, walked up to the, um, table to like exchange our card and get the tennis balls. And And my, our, my friend, Emily and I were like, Oh, we can't believe they're using those balls. Right. Yes. What do you mean? I didn't know. And then I think, um, I think her husband got a case of them and we went out to hit and she was like, I'm sorry, I only have this brand. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, because I know they care. She like, I'm like, yeah. oh, she's you know. like approving it. Like, are these okay to play with today? But yeah. Well, and sad. to give you like a tiny 411 on why you like premium balls is they are use, using like premium materials. So like mm-hmm. the premium ones are wool, like wool woven onto the ball where it's the not so premium ones are felt and then even the process is like they're woven onto the premium balls and they're punched into the lower end balls and then even like the amount of rubber on the ball is Mm -hmm. different between them and then like the air so there is a reason again it is like a debunk yes there's a reason why you like the more expensive balls (laughs) oh so if i lose i'm gonna blame it on the ball absolutely yes 100 percent. i did lose my singles match yesterday and it was definitely the the balls yeah (laughs) balls bad balls (laughs) yeah i actually heard that deep dive on 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 balls um oh gosh the the podcast that you did and i thought it was great i was like this is why i'm a snob i didn't know why i didn't know why but that is exactly (laughs) the reason yeah Yeah. any other debunks I mean, we could go all day, probably. <laughs> well, this is kind of the, a personal one, but best yeah. shoes for plantar fasciitis. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations since I do change my shoes so much? So I feel like I am dealing with a bout of plantar fasciitis, but I don't want to admit it. Right. Yes, don't <laughs> but, talk about it. <laughs> no. Um, something that I've noticed is I really need like a good heel counter in like in my shoe to really hold my feet in secure. And I don't know what your foot, do you have like a medium, narrow, wider foot? I, I think medium. 
Okay. Yeah. I mean, the, the gel resolution has a tried and true favorite. For That's sure. what I'm wearing right, right now. Yeah. Okay, great. Perfect. Finally, she great. got there. She got there. Uh, <laughs> yes. And the, oh, another one from ASICS that it's been really hard to get your hands on with the pandemic and they're going through some they're going to update it. But the Court FF2 is one of my favorite ASIC shoes. Currently, we don't have any on the women's side. But stay tuned. It's going to yes. – it will be back. I have um, that too. The new Adidas Avacourt shoe I really like. Our playtesters all really like that shoe. It's, like, been designed specifically for women. And, like, that's one of the things that they were super aware of when they were designing the shoe. So I love that. And also, there's a lot of women that ask for shoes because they have bunions. And that shoe also, I think, solves that problem. Um, Another one of my favorites right now is the Diadora B Icon shoe. And the Diadora always has, like, super comfortable shoes, but still really good support and, like, premium materials. So those are all great. Yeah. 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 It was like, can you you email us that list when we're done? A hundred percent. Because you know we're going to buy them all. (laughs) Maybe we'll do a video on That's a great idea. Yeah. Thank you for helping me come up with my content. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. No, that's a great question. And one that we get asked a ton. So. Like I said, I could talk to you guys all day. Real quick, though, I want to hear a little bit more about your podcast. Tell me about some of the best stories you've heard. Tell me about like how inspiring it has been having this podcast. I am sure you have gotten people to like start playing tennis and stick with tennis. Talk to me a little bit about your experience. Oh, it's been so much fun. We talked to someone who started playing tennis when she was 56. And she did it because her daughter played and she wanted to be able to play with her daughter. Mm -hmm. We've spoken to people that have had like double knee replacements and hip replacements and they come back really quickly because they want to play with their teammates. Mm -hmm. Ah. Yeah, we um, we had a we had someone reach out that's playing D3 um, tennis right now. Mm -hmm. And she wrote to us and said, I love listening to your podcast because. I grew up playing with my family and it just reminds me of like being out, you know, and playing with my parents and which we thought was. Yeah. We remind her of her mother. Yeah. Basically, (laughs) basically we remind her. And we are moms. So that makes sense. But she did. She said she was homesick. Like she was enjoying playing, you know, in college, but Mm -hmm. she was far away from home and she was kind of homesick. So she listens to our episodes. Um, We, um, we used to, well, Carolyn mostly would want to, quit tennis oftentimes. So when we, I lose. Yeah, when, when she I loses, lose. so she would say It's so me. frustrating. It's yeah. a frustrating sport. Yeah, so she would call me, and then now what we do is we just do a podcast episode about it. So I'm like, <laughs> hold that thought. We'll, you know, we'll record on that. But we have actually, um, I think, got a lot of people to continue playing to not quit because, um, you know, we do just tell those stories that are happening out on the court. Like Like, awkward situations. Yeah, it happens to everyone. There's not an official. So these weird things do happen. Um, But it's so much fun to play. Exactly. Yeah. And we've done stuff like Tennis Manners was like a super um, popular one. Um, Like she said, like we've done one on people with like major surgeries that have come back because they Mm -hmm. were you know, just desperate to come back to like their social circle and, you know, and be on a court and play. We've, We've done what awkward things people say at the end of matches. Instead yes. of just great match, they have to tell you yes. why they didn't why play well. Why they didn't well. play well. You know, you're <laughs> like, but we went to match tiebreak. Yeah. I or thought like, this was a great match. Yeah. Or um, things not to say to your partner. Did we talk about that one? Yet? Oh, yeah. One yeah. of the best things that Carolyn came up with was um, don't show up on a tennis court and say, I drank so much wine last night. I'm hungover. Like, not a great thing to tell your partner. No. And I've had several <laughs> partners tell me that. Um, we talk a lot about rules. Yes. Carolyn loves rules because she's an attorney. Um, <laughs> and there's a lot of rules that we want to change. So we're going to try to influence just some oh. of the silly stuff, you know, mm-hmm. like. That, that we deal with every day on a tennis court, you know, so we'd like to try to change that. So we talk a lot about rules. Um, we, we got questions from a beginner and she asked things like things that we take for granted. She asked things like, why do we start out and do baby tennis for a couple minutes? Like, you know, that like just over yeah, the net and tennis, then we yeah. back up to the baseline and who gets to serve for like all the stuff that we just kind of, you could just go out and and it's just part of your natural tennis life. And I'm like, yeah, yeah why do we do that? <laughs> <laughs> they were great questions. They were great. And it was super popular. And I yeah. think tennis can be very intimidating as a yes. sport to go yes. out there and play. And I think, you know, we're just everyday players. And, you know, we're the majority of the people who are like us. A hundred percent. They're not like Michelle, who's amazing. <laughs> yeah. You know, we'll never reach Michelle's level. Right. But we love it. And the friendships you make. I mean, it's yeah. just so much fun to do. 
I think it's a sport like people can watch it in person or on TV. They can go out and play it. It's not like you can pick up football when you're an adult. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter your age. You yeah. can do it. Yeah. At, you can start at 56. Yeah. You can start at 70. Yeah. You can start at any age. So it's one of those sports that, you know, it's probably why golf is so popular because you can actually play golf. You can watch golf. You can go to tournaments. You can, you know, there's not a ton of sports where, you know, as an adult, you can go out and play every day. Um, like I said, you can find your social circle. You can, you know, I mean, it's just something to keep you active. And there's just so many, every single person has a tennis story. A lot of people don't know it, but every single person that has stepped foot on a court has a tennis story. And so, and yeah, and what we thought was interesting too, is a lot of people that talk to us always talked about the mental health benefits mm-hmm. to playing, <laughs> especially at our age. Yeah. That's nice. Cause I feel like I have the opposite problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. See people that started early. <laughs> Yeah, and that was a problem. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great oh, point. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, what has been the hardest part of the podcast for you guys? Learn just learning all the new things, but we love it. Yeah, but it, cool. it takes so much time, as you know. Yeah, mm-hmm. and te- technology because we did start during COVID. You know, mm-hmm. er- everything's not been in person, and yeah. so we haven't even been in person. We, like haven't. we are today. This, yeah, we've done a lot. Where Carolyn's been at her house, I've been at my house, and then we, you know, um, bring a guest in on the computer. We're mm-hmm. starting to be able to do that more and feel a little bit more safe doing that. But it, you know, in two and a half years since we've been doing it, we haven't done a lot in person. So, but um, Carolyn's done all the kind of technical stuff. I've done all the marketing for it. Yeah. Um, and we just love learning just new things. Learning We're learning so new much. things every day. Yeah. And it's, we are always like, this is a full-time job without yeah. being a full-time job. Without <laughs> being paid. Yeah. Without being, yeah. <laughs> but having fun. But yeah, but loving it. And really like just learning like, everything about websites and, you know, marketing and the technical aspect. Yeah. So, and yeah. I do think, I mean, because of Aaron, I think it's definitely changed my mentality on the court and that to really enjoy being out there, that it's such a privilege to play and how fortunate we are just to get out and play. And sometimes, you know, I'm super competitive, but not very mm-hmm. good. And that's a bad place to be in <laughs> on a tennis court with a little ball that you're trying to hit over the net and you can't get it to go where you want it to go. So and it can be incredibly frustrating. Because, but Aaron's really changed my mentality on it. And so even yesterday, you know, I lost a match, but I had so much fun out there playing, like really, really enjoying playing. So, But the reason is, and she said a really good thing. So we were in playoffs yesterday for our local oh. league. And yeah. It's a big deal, Michelle. Huge, oh, no, I, I know. I mean, <laughs> That's why I was like, oh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I'm like, but thanks we, for joining me after a crazy we intense lost, day. We lost all four courts oh, and no. Carolyn came off the court and normally she would not have said this. It was fine. They're they're the strongest team. They're going to go on to the state tournament. They could probably even make it to sectionals and nationals. But she walked off the court. Hers was the last one to finish. I had already lost singles. Our other teammates had lost, but they were like set tie breaks or match tie breaks. So it was close, but she came off the court and she said, how'd everybody do? And we were like, oh, we lost. And she said, listen, if we're going to lose, lose all of it. Don't come down to like one court. Like she didn't want to walk off and be the losing court. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, so she's like, if you're going to lose, just lose it all, you know, because it is kind of still a team mentality, Yeah. you know, mm-hmm. which, which we love. And like we've had on the people before the person or the team that won the three, five national championship. Yes. And a lot of other podcasts don't cover you know, True. just regular, you Everyday know, players, players that are winning the national championship. And so that's kind of what our podcast does. That's a little bit different. No, I love that you guys are in that's that great, space. Yeah. And and like, I love having conversations like this. So I, I can see why your podcast has become so successful. And tons of people are tuning in because it's like really fun stories. And then also, I would think too, because something not to like tell you my side, but like something that I've really learned that I didn't think I would learn through hosting a podcast is to listen better. And also, I always love connecting with people. So it's, it it can be very reflective, personally. So even you're talking about like how you're handling things on the court differently. I feel like that could also play in. Yes, it's it's true. I sometimes think I need to be more competitive, like listening, you know, instead of just all sunshine. And I'm really not like I definitely win matches and want to win first and foremost. But my best my my happy place is really good tennis against People that are at least not mean. They don't have to be extra nice, but they have to not be mean <laughs> and and play good tennis. And win or lose, you know, I, I'm happy to be out there. Nice. Um, That's a good perspective. But then sometimes I'm like, maybe I need to be more competitive because we have had people on that are like, it's all about winning, you know? <laughs> 
And that's what, that's, what's fun to them. Like tennis isn't fun unless they win. So then I'm like, maybe I need to be that way. (laughs) No way. No way. You have it right. As someone that like has that mentality and is like way too competitive, don't, I wouldn't pass it on to anyone. (laughs) Right. Right. Okay. Let's wrap up with some fun, quick fire questions. Okay. Favorite pro player. (sighs) Oh, gosh. Uh, well, I use a two-handed forehand, so Shea Siwe. Oh, nice. Yes. Good her. call. Mine is Serena because she hits the crap out of the ball. Oh, yes. So do yeah. I. And I'll, I don't hit anything like it, but I, I just love that power. Oh, yeah. She's fantastic. I love it. Okay. Serve or return? Serve. Oh, return <laughs> all day. Yeah. Just Same. wailing <laughs> it. Yeah. I know if I lose my serve, I'm like, but I got a return game coming. <laughs> Up or down? Up. Up also. Always, right? Me too. (laughs) Um, Post-match libation of choice. It's kind of, mine's boring. Mine's an iced coffee because we usually play during the day. Not always. Mm -hmm. Like we play, I play, we play summer singles and Carolyn plays mixed. I do not. But um, so usually I have to work again after, but I will treat myself to an iced coffee and then at night have a little Prosecco or something. But yeah, mine's actually just a Coke. She's yeah, through the day. (laughs) She's. I'm normally going to pick up my kids. She like the day's nice. just starting. She wasn't allowed to drink soda as a kid, so now she's like <laughs> drinks it as an adult. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Make up for lost time. That's, yeah. that's fine. Or if I see her like like in a match, I know she needs a soda. I'll run up and like Carolyn needs a Coca Cola right now. Yeah, and you know it's bad when I'm drinking a Coke <laughs> on the court. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which is funny because I feel like not now, but like 20 years ago, like the pros, that is what they would do. They're they like drinking caffeine. Coke. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Serena famously has gotten her espresso her sent to her. on yeah. the court. And yeah. somebody well, did ask for a Pepsi or because people were sending it to me that a pro oh, yeah. asked for like a Coke and they're like, Carolyn, look, just like yeah. you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> nice. Um, and then last question. What's on your tennis bucket list? Oh, U.S. Open for US me. Open. Well, all the slams. All the slams. Mm-hmm. But U.S. Open first. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Nice. Awesome. Well, that's fun. Uh, thank you guys so much for yeah. joining me. Where can people catch up with you? Where can they listen to your podcast? Give me all of your details. Well, you can go to our website, which is secondservepodcast.com and listen to all our episodes. Yeah. And all of the, you know, every podcast host. Uh, <laughs> platform out there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But yeah, we have yeah, yeah. every we have every episode on our website and it's searchable. So like if somebody just wants to hear about drama or rules. Rules or you know, they can just do a search there. Yeah. And and all the Facebook, Instagram, all the socials are on our website. Cool. Well yeah. thank you ladies so much for joining thank me. You. This was a super fun conversation and happy hitting. Thank you. You <laughs> too. Thank you.